Celeste might be the perfect medium to understand the trans experience. At its core, this game is about duality. When Madeline looks in the mirror, she doesn't know who she sees anymore. Madeline is set up as the antagonist in the narrative, but she's one half of our hero's personality. In the game, the goth girl represents our anxious feelings, but she could also symbolize transness. Everything about Celeste embodies what it feels like to be trans. Throughout this arduous journey, our hero changes as a person. A mystical domain brings out qualities that she doesn't expect, a different side of her she's never shared with the world. At first, her social resources react negatively. Many of them dislike the new way she presents herself. Madeline is bad news. But in the end, we can see they were mistaken. She's the perfect addition to an ever-growing family. Or how about the gameplay and music? Living in society as a trans person is exhausting. Constantly battling harmful misconceptions can feel like scaling a mountain with no end in sight. Difficult gameplay embodies these sensations expertly. Not to mention, a meaningful song accompanies every moment in Celeste. There are times when Madeline is scared, frustrated, unsure, or filled with self-love. The music conveys each one of these ideas with precision yet understanding. Duality is also present in the soundtrack. Battleline and Madeline take up one half of the album. The more disorganized sounding tracks relate to the trans journey. Conflicting ideas spinning around in our heads about which gender norms are acceptable. Celeste demonstrates adversity, but also empowerment in the form of true self-expression. Madeline's process of coming out seems disheartening. As the player, there are times when we want to quit. Getting discouraged is more than understandable. Having to climb this mountain, others don't think twice about. But the payoff makes up for it and then some. When our hero accepts herself, life is so beautiful. Interactions that once gave us anxiety now fill us with excitement. What makes Celeste truly powerful is that you don't have to be LGBT to resonate with this game on a deep level. Many people online gush about how this piece of media filled them with perspective. Every one of us has had instances when we feel uncomfortable with our bodies. Wanting to express ourselves fully, but society shuts down our identity. Feeling anxious that we are confined to a certain way of life. Part of what makes Celeste so important is that it can build empathy towards trans folk. Empathy ultimately drives this game to new heights. While creating this game, Maddie Thorson found out she was trans, which is so inspiring. When you really think about it, this game is her story. So today, I wanted to break down how Celeste expertly deconstructs transness. I'm very, very. If you enjoy this content, like and share with your friends. Also, don't forget to hit that sub button and notification bell. Let's start with the dynamic duo. Madeline and Battleline help to convey identity issues. Initially, the young adventurer seems confident in herself. She starts off her climb by sassing an old hag, but the wise woman's tidings start to take form. When Battleline appears, Madeline is intimidated. Who is this person? She begins to see the goth girl as the enemy. She wants nothing more than to get rid of her other half. As the story continues, she becomes increasingly frustrated. Why won't this person just go away? Many members of the LGBT can develop a sense of self-hatred. Society's judgments can eat away at our self-confidence. When enough people start to hate on our other half, we become ashamed of it. So we push the feelings down and pretend they don't exist. Think about how Mr. Oshiro and Theo react to Battleline. Her and Mr. Oshiro get into a battle. Theo refers to her as the demon doppelganger. But what about poor Battleline? Isn't she just trying to exist? Doesn't she have her other half's best interest in mind? Many of the negative interactions come from the framing. The ghostly host has been grilling our hero relentlessly, so the goth girl intervenes. She's Madeline's courage in this interaction. Battleline goes way too hard, but she's trying to defend our hero and stand up for herself. Theo tells Madeline that maybe this person is a twisted defense mechanism. Who wouldn't be defensive after all these characterizations? To be fair, he later comes around as a voice of reason, but this criticism still hurt Battleline. We take for granted that our allies are inherently good, but they judge Battleline pretty harshly. Madeline's dialogue with Theo next to the fire also gives us a good idea of the difficulties associated with transness. Understanding how to navigate the world is dependent on context. 
Imagine from this point on, you have to act the exact opposite of your gendered expectations. If you're a woman, now you have to dress masculinely, talk in a low tone, and grow out your body hair. If you're a man, you have to shave your entire body, wear dresses, and put on makeup. Imagine for a second how uncomfortable you'd feel as your peers look at your new appearance. The feeling of harsh judgment is they try to pick apart the new you. Some are lucky enough to have unconditional love, but many face harsh scrutiny. Our hero talks about how difficult this experience can be. There must be something wrong with me. I'm just floating in the abyss, swimming in a random direction, hoping that I'll find something, but I can't escape myself. I'm literally fighting myself the entire way. One of the saddest moments in game is when Madeline tries to destroy her other half. <laughs> this sensation is especially relatable. We talked earlier about how LGBT members face inordinate amounts of discrimination. One potential outcome is a deep sense of self-hatred. However, it's so important to remember that this is the result of heavy social pressures. Madeline doesn't like Battleline because her social resources don't approve. She's building contempt towards her perceived enemy. Once she makes peace with herself, their perceptions quickly change. They can see how happy she is after accepting her identity. Not to mention the ability she's gained after admitting it's okay to be scared. Gameplay is another component that helps embody the trans experience. Celeste is hard as hell, but why is this the case? The exceptionally challenging game design serves an important narrative purpose. Every environment demonstrates the associated struggles. The wind levels signify the ever-looming social pressures one must push against. The Mirror Temple illustrates how our darkest thoughts can get the best of us. The Celestial Resort encapsulates what our mind looks like when we store up negative thoughts. As Madeline grows as a character, she gets access to an ever-increasing arsenal. Her breathing techniques help her float through impossible terrains. This continual transformation crescendos in one of the most powerful moments in gaming history. When Madeline hugs Battleline, we can see her self-love shine through. After a moment of heartwarming acceptance, our hero gets the ability to double jump. Narratively, this is the perfect tool. When they battle each other, their capacity is limited. A person experiencing gender issues can't be expected to perform in the same way as someone who isn't. I love this design choice so much. She's able to reach new heights after she bolsters her inner confidence. The progression in gameplay shows the different stages of transness. When we are internally conflicted, our capacity to climb is limited. As we begin to understand ourselves better, we can jump to new heights. The difficulty spikes also represent struggles with identity. When someone starts to realize they are having gender issues, a common reaction is to hide it. Fight against these internal feelings that won't stop. After our inner worries bubble to the surface, we have to reconcile our identity. Celeste increases in difficulty as we make our way up the mountain. Near the summit is the most challenging part of the game. Actualizing ourselves requires an incredible amount of work, especially in the face of heavy social pressure. Once we reach the top, we get to relax and enjoy the scenery, relishing in every part of the journey and who we are, all the meaningful moments we've had along the way. After all this craziness, we hear the sweet embrace of silence. Music is one of the most powerful ways to convey ideas in a game. Many of us love the Legend of Zelda series. Whenever one of their games open, they hit you with a wonderful melody that sets the mood. The same can be said for a game like Hollow Knight. Giant orchestral themes boom to life as we battle our foes. But Celeste is the cream of the crop in terms of music. Every song helps to convey different emotions throughout this adventure. Many tracks in Lena Rain's composition deal with deep internal struggles. The prologue sets the stage. At first, we are tentative about our identity. The music gives us the vibes of deep introspection. Once we start coming to terms, our anxiety builds alongside the melody. Even the final moments of silence signify our peace of mind after all we've been through. From this point on, 
Every song could be thought of as a step in our self-exploration. The song First Steps embodies the excitement that comes from trying out new ideas. Resurrections marks our first stride towards finding out who we truly are. As Madeline confronts her other half in the mirror, anxiety eats away at us. Scattered and Lost represents the suppression of our feelings bubbling over. Madeline can't contain Madeline any longer. Anxiety is pretty self-explanatory. Confronting Myself and Little Goth are two songs that deserve an extra focus. When Madeline attacks herself, things are tense. We feel stressed about reaching our foe, but also, what happens next? Are we okay with killing a part of ourselves? Confronting Myself tells the story of a fierce war. The chanting vocals, uplifting synth harmonies, and percussion make us uneasy. Trying to kill off a part of who we are feels soul-crushing. Once the confrontation ends, Madeline must make a formative decision. Cast aside her other half or embrace her wholeheartedly. This scene destroyed me partially thanks to the song Little Goth. After all the intensity, we decide to make peace. I'm tired of fighting. Every note on the piano resonates deeply. Madeline feels horrible that she's hurt Madeline, saddened by the fact that she's been denying her truth. As the melody transitions, Madeline is forever changed as a person. Understanding what true love feels like, her perspective changes. Then comes Reach for the Summit. This track is the culmination of all our accomplishments. I can't praise enough how powerful the lack of music is at the end of Celeste. Madeline has gone through hell and back, battling apparitions, facing scary mental health monsters, and reconciling her identity. After coming out, her internal conflict is resolved. For the first time in her life, Madeline is truly at peace. Anyone who's experienced gender issues knows instantly what this feeling is like. A calm state of mind we never thought possible. Thanks for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. Celeste is such a poignant piece of media that I highly recommend you check out. Not only is it a powerful narrative about controlling our anxieties, but also the struggles that many of us face with gender identity. The themes of duality, challenging gameplay, and amazing soundtrack tell a transformative story. Madeline is a different person than when she started the climb. At first, she was scared, socially reserved, and filled with anxiety. Once she accepts her transness, her personality changes. She's fun to be around, witty, and has a heart of gold. Madeline shows us the power of a positive environment on her mental health. She isn't broken or damaged. She was just lacking a little love. Stories like Madeline's and Maddie Thorson are so important going forward. We all need a person that we can use as a source of inspiration in times of adversity. Seeing them live their truth can help us create a world of love, empathy, and strawberry pie with friends. Let me know what you thought about this video. How do you interpret Madeline's struggles? I'd love to hear from you.